Imagine a seven-year-old kid walking up to their parents, standing in front of them with so much confidence, saying, Mom, Dad, I want to become the world's best hacker. Sounds pretty absurd for a seven-year-old to say, right? Well, that seven-year-old was me. A journey that began with one simple thought. I really suck at video games. And despite wanting to become the best gamer in class, I was way too lazy to put in the time and effort to become good enough to beat my classmates. Although, I would always win when we were playing card games or board games. But for one reason only. I was always cheating. <laughs> so, when I found out that there might be a way to get around systems and win without really playing, I was hooked. I was going to become the world's best hacker. And I was fully committed into making that dream a reality. And that's the beauty of a child's mind. I didn't know what was impossible yet, so everything felt possible. There were no limits to what I could achieve. So there I was, at seven, borrowing my first books on programming. But the books were in English, and I could barely read in Swedish, so I didn't really learn much. But at least I learned one thing. I learned that code looked like a bunch of random letters and symbols. And after watching some really bad hacking movies, I was ready. And by ready, I mean that I took my laptop to school, I opened up a blank Word document, I changed the background to black, and I started to write gibberish in green letters. And of course, I told everyone that I was hacking into the NSA. My classmates in first grade, they didn't really know what the NSA was. And honestly, I didn't either. I just heard about it in the movies. But my teachers, my teachers thought I was absolutely adorable. <laughs> Not surprisingly, after a few years of my hacking obsession, they didn't really think I was very adorable anymore. Perhaps because I shut down the school Wi-Fi whenever I hadn't studied for a test. <laughs> And I get how that can feel almost concerning to hear. But it's true. It didn't take me many years until the first time I hacked into someone's web camera, or the first time I took down a website, or this one is funny, the first time I used a keylogger, which is a type of surveillance technology that can use to monitor and document every keystroke on a certain computer, to find out my teacher's password to our school platform so I could delete the 10-minute late notice I didn't want my parents to see. <laughs> it felt like a superpower. I lived in a connected world and had the ability to take control of the connected devices. Teenage me couldn't thank seven-year-old me enough because cybersecurity would become my life calling from that day. And I was so happy because I had my thing. I did something that my classmates around me had defined as impossible. But still, something had changed. This mindset of how I had the ability to achieve anything that I, that I had when I was seven, it started to get faded with the years. Every new idea, every new ambition suddenly had limits. Oh, I should become a Formula One driver. No, I'm too old. I should have started with go-karting when I was six. Or I have this great new business idea. Well, there's nothing similar on the market. And if no one else has done it, why would I? So I made a decision to stick with the hacking something I felt comfortable in, and something I already knew was possible for me. And 
my hacking goal of becoming the world's best hacker, it continued all the way up to high school. So I, you can probably imagine how excited I was when I found out that my school was going to participate in a competition called Hack Your World. And I was super excited because I thought this was going to be some catch the flag hacking challenge, which is a type of cybersecurity exercise. But when the day came, I found, I found out that this was a hackathon. That we had a short amount of time to come up with an idea that would in some way create a more equal education, create a demo, pitch this to the jury, and hopefully win. <laughs> Um, well, at first, I was very, very skeptical. Come on, I'm a hacker. My skills are built on breaking into systems, not breaking down barriers through innovations. But then I started to think about it. Skills are just skills. It's what we do with them that really defines us. And if my skills as a hacker can be used to create a positive impact on the world? Well, of course I'm going to try that. So right away, I started to approach the challenge in front of me with a hacker's mindset. And I actually found many similarities in the process of problem solving. Both involve a deep understanding of a system, the identification of its weaknesses and limitless, and the development of creative and innovative approaches to overcome those challenges. I started to break down the problem I had in front of me to find ways to tweak and modify the traditional methods of learning. And let me tell you, I got so many ideas. And every time I got a new idea, I opened up Google, did my research to make sure that someone had created at least something similar to prove to me that I wasn't trying to do something impossible. And every single time, guess what? Nothing. Again, I stood in front of a two-way path. Either I try to push for something that might be impossible, or I give up and continue with my hacking. And I started thinking again. And the more I was thinking, the more I was reminded of seven-year-old me. It felt so wrong of me to determine my success rate based on other people's experiences. Because I can promise you that when I was seven years old, I did not look for a story of how a seven-year-old started to pursue a career in hacking. But still, I stand here today. So why should I let someone else's definition of impossible define my potential? So I did one thing. One thing I believe set my entire life in motion. One step, one action. I decided to change my mindset. And instead of thinking, is this possible? I asked myself, how will I make this possible? And with that mindset, I took my best idea. An idea inspired by a conversation I had had with a friend earlier that same week. She had gone up to her teachers, telling them that she wanted to reach a higher grade in one of her classes. What they responded with how that was unnecessary and pointless because she did good enough for someone with dyslexia. And I took this course, and with the same determination as I had as a kid, I told myself, I am going to create something that makes my friend's life better. That's where I got my idea. And I'm going to demonstrate this with the most powerful technology there is, our mind. So, I want you to read the text behind me silently in your head. So, the idea was to digitize the inner monologue we hear in our heads when we read or think about something. And I was going to make this possible with something called eye tracking. Eye tracking is a technology that can monitor someone's eye movements on the screen. 
So if you look at the screen, at text, you will hear exactly what it says without having to do anything manually. Controlling everything from the speed to where you're reading with only your eyes. Sounded like a great idea, but it also sounded like science fiction. It felt completely impossible. But I kept reminding myself, how will I make this possible? And after hours of creating a simple demo and investigating the future development of the technology, I realized something. I realized that I would actually be able to create this. After pitching to the jury, we won that competition. But I felt like a way bigger winner than that. Because I knew that what I had in front of me was something with real life value. Something I could continue working on. Something that could better people's lives. But it was also evidence for myself, my capacity and my potential. So I kept this mindset of how do I make this possible? And I turned my idea into a company at 18 years old. And I kept this mindset as the technology transformed into larger areas of usage, into language learning, ADHD, and information gathering. And I kept this mindset when I was asked to speak in front of thousands of people, when my only experience of speaking in front of people was in a classroom with 20 teenagers. And yes, all these moments were amazing. They were awesome, if I can be honest. But do you know what really made me keep my mindset all along? It was a moment. A moment created by another person who decided to one day write me a letter. Because I came home on a Thursday after work, and on the counter there was a handwritten letter from someone who had seen one of my presentations. I took it, I opened it, and I started reading. A few days ago, my 11-year-old dyslexic son came home to me, beaten down and frustrated after failing an exam. He told me, Dad, Today I messed up so bad that I couldn't even read my own name in front of the class. Why should I even try to live my life? And so I continued reading the letter, one sentence after another, detailing the pain of a boy who lived in a society that didn't understand his uniqueness. Tested in an unfair environment, but judged by the standards of those around him. Reminding me of the very privilege I had to even read this letter. My eyes, they stopped at the last line. So thank you. Thank you for giving him his hope back. An idea that started so small had turned into something so big, so valuable, Something that made it possible for me to bring hope to another human being. An idea that started off just to help one single friend had turned into a mission to revolutionize the art of reading and create opportunities in areas that lacked them. And some might say that this catalyst started when I decided to change my mindset. And others might believe it started when I picked up my first book on cybersecurity. Or who knows? Maybe it started with that one thought of how bad I am at video games. Either way, it doesn't matter where it started. Only that it started. Because today I stand here with an incredible respect for the world around me, knowing that every step I've taken has led me to this stage to you, sharing this message. And it all comes down to two things. One, I was mindful about my decisions and I didn't underestimate an opportunity. Two, I trusted my own potential even when I hadn't discovered it yet. 
Because the butterfly effect is not just a theory, but a call to action. A powerful reminder that everything around us is interconnected and that every step you take and every action you make can create a big effect on the world. And the butterfly effect starts with a single step. A step that requires us to challenge ourselves and our assumptions about what we can achieve. So embrace the belief that you have the power to redefine impossible. And you will be amazed at the impact you can have. Your vision and passion can change the world in ways you can't even imagine today. So trust the potential within your decisions and ask yourself, how will I make this possible? Because to do extraordinary things, we must first dare to believe that we can become extraordinary. Thank you so much.